Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of the um, financial webinar. So last week, we went over part one. We talked about a number of different things. We got some really good feedback about the webinar. It was helpful to most of you. Some of you thought it went into a little too much detail. So I thought where I'd start today is just reviewing some of the basic concepts we talked about last week, see if I can't add more clarity to that. Um, we'll also go over an example of how, how money flows uh, into Double Knot as well as into your accounting system. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to talk about accrual accounting and, and how you, if you're on an accrual basis, how you go and you understand when you should recognize certain revenue. Now, we'll tell you that I spoke to about, we spoke to about 10 people, 10 organizations that were on accrual and Every one of you did a little different. So I'm going to talk about some of the basic things and, and how you can get the information you need to understand how you go in your career revenue. So we concluded the last meeting talking about how you have to use the various reports in Double Knot to record your revenue and reconciling your bank accounts. Um, and so what I figured I'd do is rather than going all these words and just repeating myself there, that we would start with the big picture of how money flows through the process. And then I'm gonna break this down so we don't have to look at this. I'm gonna show you a specific order and how monies flow through the system. But if you recall, we have an order. Somebody purchases something or some things. An order consists of one or more items, be it a registration, a reservation, a membership, a donation, a product, whatever it happens to be. And those items within an order can belong to one or more financial accounts. And we run our revenue report to get an understanding of the monies that we need to record into our accounting system for that period of time. So we run the revenue report and we'll record into the corresponding GL account in our accounting system, the monies from Double Knot. At the same time, what we recommend, and you'll recall that we recommend reading an article and we posted a link to it, and I will upload this, this presentation so you can go back to it and, and find that article. But we recommend an on-deposit of funds or deposit and transit account, the use of that. And the reason you want to do that is when you start to look at each day, the monies that settle will settle from different days. Checks settle differently than credit cards. Credit sets settle differently than payments. So using an on-deposit funds account will make your life a lot easier. Now I'm talking about customers where they're using a combination of Stripe, gift cards, cash for, for payments. Uh, and that's the majority of our customers. So we put the money when we take a, a, from our revenue report, and we're going to put that in an undeposited funds account. Now, when monies are deposited into that account, either automatically from Stripe, and you'll get a visibility into those deposits from the Together Pay Daily Settlement Detail Report, you will then reduce the undeposited funds account for the amount that was actually deposited into your bank account. So both of these are the bank account and on deposited funds account are really balance sheet items. They're, they're assets for you. And you just have to make sure that you move items from on deposited funds as deposits are made and you move items into on deposited funds as, as, as transactions or payments are made into double money. So our credit cards uh, settlements will reduce our undeposited funds account. When a gift card is used to make a purchase, not the sale of a gift card, but is used to make a purchase, you have to reduce the undeposited funds account. And when we deposit cash from our point of sale and we put that into our bank account, we reduce the undeposited funds account. Okay, so that's the basic flow of information. So the on-deposit fund account is going to go up as we take payments, is going to go down as we deposit, make deposits into our bank account. Now let's look at this, uh, taking an example amount. So what we have is an order for $100, and an order can contain one or more items, and those items can belong to different accounts in Double Knot that you've created. 
So in this example, we take an order of $100, where 75 belongs to an item that belongs to account 101, $25 uh, are for items that belong to account 102. We run our revenue report, here's our $100. We record into our GL system the corresponding amounts for each of the accounts, the appropriate accounts. We then move $100 into our undeposited funds account. Now, when we run our daily settlement detail, I'm just talking about credit cards here. When we run our daily settlement detail report in Double Nut, we're going to see the deposits that are made. So in this very simple example, uh, the deposit was made for $97 because the deposit, the gross amount, is reduced is reduced by the charge processing fees. So the 97 is the net amount, the charge processing fees uh, that you'll see in the Together Pay Daily Settlement Detail of $3. So what I would do is I would reduce my undeposited funds by the $3. Remember, we put the gross amount, $100 in here. I would reduce our undeposited funds account by the $97, which is the net, and I would add back in the charge processing fees to bring that to 100. The offsetting entry for the charge processing fee on that day is $3 to our merchant fees account that's in your general ledger system. So everything sort of balances out. This undeposit of funds is gonna go up as we take the transactions, it's gonna go down as we, t as we the money hits our bank account. Just remember, the money that hits your bank account for Stripe is the net amount. It's the total for whatever I purchased minus the charge processing fees. So I have to make sure that I make the appropriate adjustment to our undeposited funds account. Now, this picture becomes a little more complicated when you talk about accrual. Um, and I said before, we spoke to a number of customers and some customers will do daily entry based on accrual accounting. Some will do it the day before a board meeting. Some of you at the end of a year, actually, I think the majority of you do a, an adjustment at the end of the year. So at the end of 2022, you need to make an adjustment for any revenue that belonged to events that were happening in 2024. Point being, everybody does it a little different. So let's go where I'm logged in down here, um, and I'm going to use the double knot account, and you're going to find that some of the accounts that are set up may not, you know, it's, it's just data that we use sometimes to do some testing in this particular account. But the process will hold. So let's go to our, um, let's go to our revenue report. So when I go to our revenue report, this is the way the report comes up. And if I say for the current year, again, we're not going to see a lot of data on here. If we want to see for the current year, we would see all of the revenue for our financial accounts. Again, don't pay attention to what these accounts are labeled and so forth. This is just some test data, but I can show it since it's 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 not real data here. Let's look at a couple of things on this on this report. Let's go in and we're going to modify this report. It's just a lot easier to look at that way. Um, so I'm just going to modify this report and we're going to do a few things here and we go in and modify it. One is I'm going to go and change it. This is, this revenue report looks based on the posting date. When was the transaction? When did the transaction occur? Not when did the transaction hit our bank account? It could hit our bank account tomorrow, the next day, four days depend down the road, depending on what it is. So when we look at these filters, this is based on that date, is the date the money came in. So let's look at a couple of other things. I'm gonna click back on fields. Let's say that what we wanna do is that we're going to say, look at date. Date is the date that a payment was actually made. Okay, so let's just put this date in there. Uh, I'm just going to drag it and put it right here. And I'm just going to group by date. I don't really care about the time. So if multiple transactions happen on a particular date, we'll do that. Now, I might get a lot more information back here, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like. 
So in this case, we are going to, this report should come back just in a moment. Um, so it's going to show us the basic revenue report, but it's going to bring back the date of that transaction. What's the date of that particular event? Uh, so you can see here, we ran the revenue report for the current year, but we have something over here that was is happening in 2025, which is not uncommon. We could have reservations for a camp in 2025. You could have reservation, uh, reservations for a cabin rental at some point in the future. So you may decide um, when to recognize that revenue. Now, let me talk about that a little bit more. We have some customers that recognize, don't accrue membership monies. So they're gonna recognize it when they take the payment. But maybe for education events, they wanna accrue for that. So let's go and take a look at other things that we can do with this report. So I'm gonna hit done here. And so if I wanted to, what I could go through, and I'm just going to go back to the revenue report. I could say based on the, I'm just doing current year. So I have some data. Again, I could say, I'm going to recognize uh, everything for the gift shop when it's sold. I'm going to recognize membership when it's sold. So regardless of when it's sold, I'm going to recognize it at the time I made the payment. And that's what this corresponds to. So say, for example, uh, double knot uh, revenue, whatever that happens to be. Maybe that's event revenue. And I want to recognize that in the future. So one of the things I could do here is if I, I, I don't have to go and edit the report, I can go here and say uh, date, right? I could say date. Uh, and I can do this little cog and I could say, uh, isn't less than, uh, I like that one, isn't, isn't less than, in other words, it's going to be greater than or equal to. So I could say here, with the current year, uh, I'm just going to go through and do a couple of things here. I like to see this is between calendar. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, I want to see the revenue we took from 1123 to um, uh, May. I can do it for a single month. All right, I'm going to go back to February so we can get something here. But I want to say, I want to look at all transactions we took between the first of the year and February 28th where the date is greater, is, isn't less than um, 3 1. Let's see if anything comes back. And so we could update this. And what we're seeing right now is that here are transactions we took between the first of the year and the 28th of February, where the date of the event is greater than that. So let's go and add something else to the fields here. And sometimes I just, let me see if we can do it this way. Go to fields. I am going to add the date to that report. So I have date here and I am just going to group by date. Da, da, da. That's fine. And I am going to say update the results. And what it's going to come back here is the date of that actual event or program. So these are transactions, monies I've processed between 1 1 2023 and 2 28 2023, where the date of the event is greater than, greater than um, 3 1. 3 1 or greater, I should just say, it isn't less than, right? So it'd be 3 1 and greater. So what does this mean? So if I was in a cruel basis of accounting, I would move all of, so we'll just take a screenshot here so we can come back to this. Okay. So again, this is revenue I took in my reporting period. That's for the future. Some of you would actually put in here one, one, 
one one twenty two thousand twenty two to twelve thirty one two thousand twenty three or whatever your physical year is, and this would be one one two thousand twenty three, and I would then run this report and I would find what revenue do I want to defer until next year. Just think of it that way, right? So this would be revenue I want to defer until next year. So I would do a one time adjustment. This is the most common example among you all and how you handle this. So this right now is going to show me transactions I took in this time period that are for use beyond the time period. And if you were doing this once a year adjustment, these two dates would be your physical year and this would be the first day of your new fiscal year. And I would get the revenue accordingly. Okay, so let me capture that. All right, so now, if I was in the accrual basis, a vanilla accrual basis, I would use this to, to understand what revenue I need to recognize. So I would run the revenue report. I would run it for the current year as an example. I would move all of that revenue into, um, I would move all of that revenue into a deferred revenue account. And then I would only recognize it when it's appropriate to recognize, right? So I could run, I could run this report. I could say for a certain period of time. And I'll say one, one. So assuming I'm running this report for one, one to 228. And so I, and in the ideal, very clean world, I would just take all these numbers. I would remove the, I would move 128, $111.28 $17.18. Just the online portions, the offline ones, virtually every one of you is, is handling those already in your accounting system. That's money you processed outside of double nut. So I would take the 111.28 and the 117 excuse me, the $17.88, the net of those two, and that's what I would move into deferred revenue. Then what I would do is I would go into a revenue report and say, what revenue should we recognize in that period of time? So I can come into here. I could say, um, I would come in here, I'd say between calendar, I just like to get that, and I could say 1123, the 228, 228, 23, and I could add in here, and I could say date of the event. So what I would really want to do, I could say date, and what monies do I recognize? So in order to understand the money I recognize, I would change this to rather than the equals and I would put it um, isn't greater than. So I want to get everything here isn't greater than and just go and do this. So now if I put that in there, I do 228, 2023 and I say update results. And so these would be the money. I processed, and we'll verify this in a minute. These are the monies I processed in this reporting period where the date isn't greater than 228.23. And just to verify that, I'm just going to go with the fields. And I'm going to add the dates there, and I am going to add that, and then I'm going to say update the results. And what we're going to see here is that these are monies I processed in that period of time, again, we process our reporting period, where the monies were for items that happened before 228. So I would move the normal revenue report, I would move into deferred revenue, and then I would run this report to say, what money should I recognize for that period of time? And that's what we see there, right? So these are the monies I should recognize. Now, it is possible, let me see if we have an example of that. Here's an example. It is possible 
that I took a payment for something that happened in a prior reporting period. So say, for example, a school came and visited, they visited the museum, you, they had a check or um, they had a balance due. And for some reason, they didn't pay it when they actually visited. They pay it the next day and they went online and they made a payment. Uh, so I, I collected a payment in this reporting period for something that happened in a prior reporting period. So I have to make sure I recognize that money at this point because I actually took the payment. In this case, I took a $50 payment for something that happened in, in, on May 1st, 2019. So this would be the money I actually recognize. Now I will tell you, I went and customized this report right now. I think it's it's good so you understand the data. We're gonna create an earned revenue report that you can just run to understand what you recognize. Now, some of you, as I said before, will recognize things when you take them and you don't accrue for them. So say you have a membership, I sold the membership on 228, uh, but and so that I would recognize the membership on 228. I am not necessarily going to accrue for it one, you know, one twelfth of it every month, or I'm not going to accrue for it at the date the membership starts because it might start tomorrow. Um, which you have the ability to go and adjust start dates. So, and some of you will recognize membership revenue right away, whereas education revenue, maybe you want to recognize that based on the date of the event or a facility reservation, a birthday party, a field trip. You may want to recognize the date of the field trip. So some of you are going to have to work with those two reports. Some things you're going to recognize right away, and you're going to just recognize it from the basic revenue report, and then you will use the earned revenue report to understand maybe I will just partially recognize membership, right? So that's the way that's going to work. I know it's a little confusing, hopefully not too confusing. And um, if you have any questions on that, just feel free to ask us. We can meet with you if your process is a little different. But if you're taking point of, if you're using point of sales, you're going to have daily reconciliation reports for your point of sale you can see what cash you've taken uh, so there are other reports that come to play with point of sale but i don't want to introduce those right now most of you in point of sale are already dealing with those but your point of sale deposits would also reduce your deposit in transit so with that any questions you have would just send those to us and we will answer those um, and depending on the questions that come in, you know, we may just address those one off, or we may just sort of do a little video and, and share it with, with all of you if it's a question that is, is relevant to everybody. So with that, I hope this was helpful and get back to us with any questions.